Want to see how to make a quilt as you go t-shirt quilt? Well, let's get started. As well as your t-shirts, you will need some lightweight iron-on interfacing to prevent our t-shirt material from stretching while you are sewing it. Some batting, some fabric to join the blocks together, some thread, and a ballpoint needle or a jersey needle. First of all, wash and iron your t-shirts. Use a cotton cloth over the print to prevent it from being damaged with the iron. You'll need to work out what size square you're going to cut. A square ruler can be handy for this, but I only have a 12 and a half inch square ruler and that's going to be a little bit too small. Now I just happen to have a 14 inch square of Perspex that I cut for another quilt. You can either go out and purchase a ruler, but if you don't want to purchase a square ruler, you could just use something like um, some tissue paper, cut the square size that you need, maybe some old x-rays. Um, it's up to you how you want to mark your square. But I'm going to go with 14 inch squares, but I'm actually going to cut my t-shirts out a little bit bigger than 14 inches. So to do this, I'm going to use my 14 inch square and I'm just going to center my motif underneath the square, just like that. And then I'm just going to go and mark the outer edge. I'm just using a chalk roller called a charcoal pen. I'm now going to cut my square out, adding an extra inch around the outer edge. So just putting my one inch line on my chalk line and cutting. So here's my first square. Now, most of my t-shirts, I was actually able to cut them out with the front and the back because I'm going to use the back of the t-shirt for the back of the quilt. But some other ones didn't quite work out that way. This t-shirt was a little bit grubby, so I may just piece some of the t-shirts together to make the extra fabric that I need for the backs. But here's my first square cut out. My quilt is going to be made up of nine blocks, so I will need nine squares for the front and nine squares for the back. On t-shirts where I wanted to center the logo, I actually included the neck edge. So I cut out my front and my back and then I used a piece from the sleeve just to fill in the neckline. I've pinned it in place and now I'm going to head to the machine to sew that. So I'm at the sewing machine and I have an all-purpose thread um, on top. That's actually a polyester thread, which is okay because our t-shirts are made of polyester cotton. I have a size 80 ballpoint needle or that's the same as a jersey needle. Now the reason why we use a ballpoint needle is because if you used a sharp needle, a sharp needle can make little cuts in the knit fabric and over time small holes will appear. Whereas a ballpoint or a jersey needle, um, what that does is it just slips through the knit fibers not making any damage. And I just have a straight stitch of 2.5. What I'm going to do is to sew um, my patch in the neck, I'm just going to stitch in the ditch of the neckline and then another row of stitching close to the outer edge of the neckband. Trim away the top edge. and flip over to the back and trim away the excess fabric. And now for the iron-on interfacing. The interfacing that I'm using is a light woven cotton interfacing. Now that just looks like a voile fabric, so it's nice and thin, and on one side it's rough, and that is our glue side. Just make sure you're using a light interfacing because we don't want to add stiffness to the t-shirts, we just want to prevent them from stretching. Iron the interfacing onto the back of your front square and onto the back of the backing square also. I've cut my interfacing at 14 and a half inches, and I'm just going to center that. And now here's a little tip. When you cut your interfacing out, if it's a woven interfacing, and most interfacings have one side that doesn't stretch and the other side that has got a little bit of stretch. So we want the non-stretch side to go across the stretchiest side of our t-shirt. Little bit of stretch, lots of stretch, but we want to prevent that lots of stretch by putting our non-stretch edge across our stretchy edge. Center it.
and then iron in place using a cloth over the top. But just make sure that whatever interfacing you're using, you do follow the instructions that come with the interfacing. And there's our piece of interfacing ironed onto the back of our first square. Continue doing the same to all of your other squares. Now you don't want to rush this process. You want to make sure that the interfacing is well fused. And something that's making this a little bit easier for me is my homemade square ironing board that I made in one of our previous videos. It just helps to keep everything nice and flat while I'm ironing the interfacing on. All of the interfacing is now ironed on and it's now time to trim the squares to size. If you use tissue paper to make your template, you could place that down and use your rotary cutter and ruler to just trim all the way around the edge. I'm gonna go back to my 14 inch square and just start trimming. And now for the batting. I'm using a low loft cotton batting with a scrim and I have cut 13 inch squares. I've cut them 13 inches because I'm going to join the pieces together using my easy cover strip method. So that's where my batting is cut half an inch smaller all the way around the edge. Always make sure that the scrim side goes to the top, but having that gap around the edge is going to reduce the bulk in the joining seam. I'm going to hold my layers together with quilt basting spray, or you could just use safety pins. So make sure that all edges of your front and your back are nice and level. And now I'm going to spray base them together. Now to quilt the blocks. You can quilt your blocks any way that you like. You can quilt all the way from edge to edge. You don't have to worry about leaving any edges open. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go with simple straight line quilting. Um, I'm going to alternate between lines going across and lines going down. I've already laid all of my blocks out so I know which block has got the lines across and which one has the lines going down. And just to show you how I'm going to do this, I have my sample here. So first of all, I'm just going to find the center at the side edge. So half of 14 inches is seven inches. And the same thing over here. And then I'm gonna use my cutting mat to line up my center on a line going straight from edge to edge, making sure everything's nice and square. And then I am now going to just connect my line. So here's my center one, marking that line. And I'm actually looking at the lines on the edge um, of the cutting mat and marking my line. I'll then just continue on connecting my two inch line. So they're gonna have two inch spaces, connecting the line from edge to edge and marking. And I'm using my chalk roller pencil. You can see how that rolls like that and um, as I mentioned before they call this a charcoal marker. I have my machine threaded up with a black thread top and bottom. I'm going to use black thread on all of my blocks. I have my walking foot on and a stitch length of three. Now it's totally up to you whether you want to stitch through the actual design. This one here um, is embroidered on and it's quite thick. So I'm actually going to stop and start um, on either side of the design. And I do have a video on basic quilting for Quilt As You Go. So you might want to check out that. It's got all my tips for stopping and starting and, um, and just quilting in general. So start quilting at the center line and then work out to either edge. When you're quilting, if you feel that you are getting some puckers or some ripples, just push all of that extra fabric towards the foot as you sew.
The blocks are all quilted and now it's time to join them together using my easy cover strip method. Now I have a detailed tutorial on this and I'll put the link in the description. Now in this demo I'm not just going to join two blocks together, I'm going to join the blocks together in rows just to give you an idea on how to start handling a quilt as your quilt starts to grow. The cover strip is a two inch strip made up with a one inch bias tape maker. Although we're using a bias maker, your strip does not have to be cut on the bias, you just cut it across the fabric from selvage to selvage. Iron three quarter inch wide strips of fusible web onto the back of your cover strip. Set the cover strip aside until required. Join your blocks together with the backs facing and you can pin together the entire row. Sew the blocks together with a 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter seam allowance. Here's a tip to make sure that you're going to get a nice even seam allowance. Pop your needle in the down position. Using a ruler, work out where your one centimeter or 3 8, three eight of an inch mark is. Line that up with the needle. And now I'm just using some double sided tape. This is just some craft tape. And I'm just going to position that at the one centimeter or three eighths of an inch mark, making sure it's nice and straight. I'm leaving that extra um, covering on the tape on one side, um, but this is just going to give me something to line my seam up with when I go to sew or line up the edge of the fabric when I go to sew. Now that we have sewn the seams, you'll see that it is nice and neat on the back and on the front we have the raw seam that we're going to press open. And you'll see I use a three eighths or one centimeter seam allowance because it sits nice and flat. Now, the other thing about this is be careful not to touch the print on the t-shirt. So just use the tip of the iron. And once you have pressed that open, you can then give that a nice press with a cloth on top. We want our cover strip to be half inch smaller than the top, half inch smaller than the bottom edge, and that's going to reduce the bulk in our adjoining seams. So our blocks are 14 inches, and we're going to cut our cover strips to 13 inches. To make sure that our cover strips are going to be nice and straight and centered, mark a line that is half an inch away from the very center of the seam, just down one side. Peel away the paper backing from the tram or the cover strip. Position it so that one side is lining up with the marked line making sure that it's half an inch away from the top, half an inch away from the bottom, and very carefully press it in place once again, making sure that you're not touching the prints. You can pop a cloth over the top to make sure that it's pressed down nicely. So in some of my other videos, you may notice that when I sew on the cover strip, I like to use this stitch in the ditch attachment, which attaches onto my walking foot. Now I know that other machine brands also have um, a stitch in the ditch foot or plate, just like that. If you don't have something like that, have a look um, at your sewing machine feet. Um, this foot here is from my Benina and that has a guide in the center of it. So if you're using something like this, all you have to do is just very easily move the needle position over so that the distance from the guide to where you are sewing is going to be about less than an eighth of an inch. Um, I like to say, if we're talking metric, probably about two or three millimeters. If you have a FAF sewing machine, have a look and see if you have one of these feet here with the little red guide on it. Same thing there, um, you can easily just maneuver that by turning the screw left or right, just so that you can get that perfect guide. And on my brother machine, and I know that Janome also have a foot that looks something like this, um, you can do the same thing with it. Now sew down both sides of the cover strip, sewing nice and close to the edge. To show you how to use a foot with a center guide, that's what I'm going to use in this video. I'm going to move my noodle position over, just so that I've got that distance from the guide to the needle. And now when I go to sew, I'm going to start above the cover strip with a reverse stitch so it's going to be nice and secure. And now all I have to do is just watch that guide and make sure that it's sewing along the edge of my cover strip. It does sometimes help also if you hold your work from behind and in front to keep it nice and taut while you sew. 
before I sew my next row together, I'm just going to trim. Because we're using t-shirt fabric, the fabric can easily stretch. Now join the rows together in the same way, backs facing, and making sure that you line up the seams. So make sure that your seams line up. Sometimes it's actually better to pin and make sure that your cover strips are lining up rather than the seam. Join one row at a time, rolling up the right hand side of your quilt so that it can easily move through your sewing machine. And here are my blocks joined together. This is what it looks like from the front and this is what it looks like from behind. Now you may have noticed that um, my cover strips are finishing half an inch away from the edge and that's because I'm going to finish my quilt off using my machine sewn binding. That binding finishes up one inch wide and it ties in with the width of my cover strips. I also have a detailed tutorial on that and I'll put the link in the description. And here's my quilt all finished. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.